Hello. In this video, I thought that we would take the derivative of what I'm going to call a vertical ellipse. So this is an ellipse. It's centered at the origin. I'm calling this a vertical ellipse because it's semi-major it's semi-major axis uh, a here is in the y direction, whereas the semi-minor uh, that's it's a bit awkward. The semi-minor b is in the x direction. So we know the equation of ellipse. That's going to be that x squared, in this case over b squared, plus y squared over a squared, because a is always the major axis. Usually, I'm, I'm pretty sure a is always the major axis, uh, just in terms of notation, um, is equal to 1. Alright, so this is obviously not kind of a formal function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. However, it is an expression that you can find the derivative of in terms of x and y uh, using implicit differentiation. Implicit, implicit differentiation. Differentiation. There we go. Okay, I cannot write it, but Differentio, that's that's close enough. Okay, so how can we do this with implicit differentio? Well, I'm just going to take the derivative of both sides. So I'm going to take the derivative of the right side of the equation. I'm going to take the derivative of the left side of the equation. So I'm going to have that the derivative with respect to x of 1 is equal to the derivative with respect to x of x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared. All right, and immediately what I can do is I can just say, hey, the left side derivative of a constant is going to be 0, no matter what, it, what it's respect to, um, what it is with respect to. Uh, and then I can split up the left side into two derivatives. It's going to be the derivative with respect to x of x squared over b squared, plus the derivative with respect to x of y squared over e squared. All right, so we can pull the b squared and a squared out, the 1 over b squared and 1 over a squared out, to be precise, uh, because those are coefficients, and they we can just take them out of the derivative and have them in later. So we can say that this is 1, you know, maybe I'll even do this in a different color. I'm going to say this is uh, 1 over b squared times the derivative with respect to x of x squared, and then we are adding, I'm going to do the same thing I did over there, 1 over a squared times, let's do that same color scheme before, the derivative with respect to x of y squared, and that's all equal to 0. So the derivative with respect to x squared here is pretty easy, that's just going to be uh, 2x times, I'll, I'll do the same thing because why not 1 over b squared, I've gone with it, and then we're adding 1 over a squared times, all right, we're taking the derivative with respect to x of y squared. We use the chain rule for this. We say, hey, there's kind of an outer function here, x squared, and I'm going to avoid using the word function, actually. There's an outer expression because the chain rule really we say function because of function notation. It's really easy to express the chain rule, but it's really talking about expressions, not necessarily functions. When you're dealing with an ellipse like this, where we have y that isn't a function of x, it, the chain rule still works because it's more about um, expressions than it is about functions. So our outer expression is x squared, um, and our inner expression, inner expression is y. And what we do is we take the derivative of the, of the outer expression, x squared, uh, and that's going to be 2x, but we plug in y for x. So that's going to be plus 1 over a squared times 2y times and the derivative of the inner function, which is, or the inner expression. I've got to watch myself there. Times dy dx. And that's what we're looking for, right? If we're trying to find the derivative of the ellipse, you know, the slope at any given point, uh, x, y on this curve, uh, we are looking for dy, dx. And I'm going to mark that here. We want to know what dy, dx is equal to. 
All right. So now let's let's bring this all together. We're going to have 2x over b squared plus 2y over a squared times dy dx is equal to 0. I forgot to say it was equal to 0 up there. Uh, we're going to subtract 2x over b squared from both sides. Uh, so negative 2x over b squared is equal to 2y over a squared times dy dx. All right, what can we do now? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide both sides by this here. So we're going to say that dy dx is equal to negative 2x over b squared divided by 2y over a squared. All right, so there's still some more to do, so I'm going to bring this, this newly found equation over here so that we can solve it under our question mark. We have a dy dx is equal to, well, when we're taking this one fraction up here and dividing by the second fraction down here, what we're really doing is multiplying the one on top by the reciprocal of the one on the bottom. So this is going to be equal to negative 2x over b squared times a squared over 2y. And you'll notice that the uh, this 2 will cancel out with this 2, and our final expression will be that the derivative of y, and that's suddenly a much brighter purple or pink, but you know, I'll go with it, dy dx is equal to a squared x over b squared y. This is kind of an interesting solution. You'll know in the video that I did on the uh, derivative of a circle, so the slope of some line on a circular curve, uh, was negative, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the negative. It's a good thing to remember. Negative. Uh, so it's negative a squared x over b squared y. You'll remember the derivative of a circle was negative x over y. So you can see how a different semi-major and semi-minor axis, which creates an ellipse, will change the derivative at any given point. Um, if Obviously, if a were equal to b, uh, the derivative would be the same as a circle because the ellipse would be a circle. Uh, I hope this was interesting. In the next video, we'll be looking at the derivative of an ellipse uh, that is horizontal. So basically, same equation, except that uh, the semi-major axis a is going to be uh, in the x direction instead, and you'll find that the uh, our result will be very similar. I just wanted to split up the videos to make things as clear as possible, because for some reason in the curriculum, uh, a, a is treated as a semi-major axis instead of just the axis in the x direction. Not sure entirely why. I think it would be a lot helpful if they assigned a and b to x and y, but you know, I don't make the rules, so I'll see you in the next video.